Yes, yes, a blessed and pleasant good night to everyone locked on to Hope 103.1 FM. It is another beautiful, beautiful Tuesday night here in the studios and we are here to, you know, conduct our program tonight. Once again, Hope for Men is all about men encouraging men. All right. So if you're tuned in currently, we want to encourage you to take an opportunity and share the live stream with another man. You know, as we always say. We believe um, men, you know, we are men of purpose, men of integrity, men who can, you know, really encourage men to walk the straight and narrow path. All right. So good night to you, my brother Trevor. How are you doing? Good night. Good night. And good evening to all the listeners. Right there. I'm doing okay. Um, in spite of the challenges <laughs> yeah 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 in spite you of know, the challenges doing okay um with the grace of god which you know gives us to to ensure that we um we go through mm -hmm. and overcome you know um i was just reflecting that um every man sees his challenge as the biggest <laughs> you know <laughs> but um together 
we could we could overcome all the challenges we we face in life yeah so, definitely uh, together with god's help and his and his grace and his strength we are able so that's mm -hmm. our um, that's our our charge tonight really is to overcome overcome our challenges all right yeah. well as we know um when when you know two or three is gathered you know the father said you know he's there in the midst of us and tonight and going forward it's our hope to you know have more men on the program so we have two distinguished guests tonight joining us hopefully um for one i hope it's not going to be his first and last time so to speak one of the other faces you guys probably already acquainted to him he's already a hoopite <laughs> you know what i mean so um let me just ask my brother roger to you know unmute his mic for me so i can adjust his setting on my end and then um I'll bring him on to avoid echo all right good All right, good. So let me just get the big man himself, my brother. He does say, Sabi, don't see that. But um, this is my brother from Tobago, Bishop Chester Aline. You understand? Yeah. Best from night to you. Grenada, brother Roger Duncan. All right, so we are here in the studio. Good night to your brothers. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Good to meet you, brother Roger. Best night to you. Nice and to meet you. also to... Um, That'll be a good night. Yeah, man. Um, I'm trying to bring uh, his name into focus. Uh, Trevor T. Trevor, Trevor, T. Trevor T. T. Yeah, Trevor T. I want to extend condolences to you and family. Shalom yeah. upon your your home and peace yeah. upon you at this time. Thank you. Good evening, you. Grenada. Good evening, everyone. All right. Well, guys, tonight we are going to continue with our conversation on, you know, men overcoming challenges yeah i think it's gonna be a very interesting conversation tonight um before we do that let me just jump into a word of prayer and ask my brother trevor t to do so for us and then we'll jump okay. into the program all right God. father we want to thank you tonight because but even as we've reflected on the price jesus paid for our redemption we know it was oh god a, a costly price and um, he faced all of the obstacles and overcame them. So tonight we thank you because he has overcome. We too will overcome because he has given us all that we need to triumph and be an overcomer. So we ask your blessing upon us tonight. Bless your servants, O God, as they, as they minister to, to those who are listening across this nation. Oh God, I thank you because... Your eyes is upon us. Your eyes is upon the men, O oh God. Hallelujah. The, the men of God whom you have anointed and equipped, O oh God, for such a time as this. I pray tonight that the Spirit of God will speak, thus said the Lord to us. You give boldness and utterance to declare, O oh God, what you know every man needs to hear yes. at this hour. Bless them, O oh God, and bless this time. We give all the praise and the glory to you. We take authority over the airwaves in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that there will be no distraction or disturbance, O oh God, but that what you are, are proclaiming through your servants and it will go forth with a loud trumpet sound, O oh God, to, 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 to harness the troops, O oh God, to, to, to mobilize your, your sons, O oh God, to be ready, O oh God, to overcome and be victorious in these times. We thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, well, guys, we want to, you know, break down these challenges into, um, what I would say, three different components tonight. Um, I don't believe that's, that is all the challenges men face. I think it's really diverse um, in these times. Some we may, not, we may not even be able to talk about them because, you know, scientists and those smart people tend to be coming up with names for um, things that people will face and in general, and then they will narrow down to, you know, the male figure <laughs> ever so often. All right. But tonight we want to look at some of the common areas um, where we believe men, you know, are challenged. Yeah. Men face challenge in these areas. So um, we will allow my brother 
uh, Roger to start off the program tonight and he will be talking more along the line of um you know men managing their finances we'll have a nice good discussion of course we would love for all those who are locked on to you know send in your comments you know share the stream and be a part of the program so brother raja is over to you and we're here to listen but also to you know ask you some hard questions or maybe just share bishop you're free to do so too so it's a conversation so let's talk thank you thank you brother savvy and good night to everyone all listeners um on, Ho on hope fm grenada it's my first and i am very excited about being here um, i have a passion um, for the growth and development of men to take their rightful place in god's kingdom and um, talking on this particular subject about managing finances um, is right up my alley as uh, based on my profession as a banker and I'm happy to, to share and hope that we can have some active discussions that will enlighten, um, especially the men who are viewing. And of course, the, all will benefit um, despite the day. Yeah. Um, so thank you, uh, Brother Sabi, for allowing me on this program. Good night to you, Brother Trevor and Bishop Aline. Blessings. The quality of um, one's life, your, your health, your wealth, the prosperity of your family, your relationship with your wife, your children, their own well-being as well, your purpose in life, your personal ministry, your ministry at the church um, or your, your assembly, the growth and development of your country, ultimately the relationship with God. Um, those are some of the, the many facets that, um, that life depends the, on and how well you manage your finances. Now, taking the time to manage your finances, um, obviously, would really pay off. Understanding what to focus on now and, and what you put in a long, put in long term place um, will help you cope better with your current and future needs. As, as men here in Grenada, we, we treat finances as a taboo subject. It's always the elephant in the room. Um, and we oftentimes shy away from it, you know, especially when we don't manage well. And when we manage well, we get wrapped up with our selfish gains and ways. Um, you see, money exerts a, a strong measure of power and independence. And when that is not present because of the absence of money, our egos as men, and we often use the word ego without sometimes understanding what that means to us. Well, it's merely, I like to term it, an inflated feeling of our self-worth, right? It's a feeling that we inflate about our self-worth and our pride. And that gets the better of us and we lose touch of life's realities and our Christian morals and values. But there is a bigger purpose to managing our finances. The scripture reminds us that God ultimately owns everything here on earth. Our job on earth here is to responsibly steward the resources that God has given to us. And uh, when we approach money with the right attitude and look for God's word as a source of guidance, we can learn to manage our finances in a way that brings glory to him. The world has given us all sorts of terminologies um, and academia um, tells us, you know, this is what we should do. This is what we should do. You know, if we look at the source of what we should do, everything that we are required to do, this was, has been given us, given to us by God. Um, you look at Proverbs thirteen sixteen. it says the wise man thinks ahead. A fool doesn't and even brags about it. Proverbs 21, 5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as his leads to poverty. Luke 14, 28. Suppose one of you want to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? So the, the solutions are there for us. Unfortunately, a lot of us look elsewhere for it. And even as Christian brothers, and sisters, we tend to, 
to miss those and um, put little faith and trust in it. And then we lean to our own understanding and that of the understanding of academia and try to follow it. But every wise, every wisdom is there for us in the Holy Scriptures as to how we should proceed to managing our finances. Now, there, there are many factors that result in poor management. And I hope that at the end um, of my discourse here tonight, you would be able to lighten, be enlightened on those, um, at least some of the major ones, and, um, and some real practical way, uh, practical approaches and methods that you can undertake to help in managing your finances. But just to list um, some of the most common to men in Grenada, that is the factors that result in poor, poor money management. Um, one, little to no understanding of Christ's instructions on managing money. And I've just quoted a, a few scriptures there for you. No specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound plans, whether it's short-term or long-term. And that's often the case because we don't even have a vision for ourselves. We haven't written it down and deliberately and intentionally engage into a program to achieve that vision for ourselves and that of our family and that of our assembly and that of our country. Little or no acceptance to the basic principles of a marriage and what it does when you become one flesh. Lack of awareness and lack of acceptance of our strengths and weaknesses as men. There's a lot of self introspection and you have to, we have to become accountable, but it really requires us to raise our hand by ourselves to say, I am weak here, I need help, I need to do something about it. No vision, like I've said earlier on, lack of awareness or understanding of financial products and services that are widely available or tailored to suit our needs. And there are opportunities outside there that we can take advantage of, but we need to be aware and understand them. Lack of, lack of awareness or understanding on the intricacies of, of money management. So those are some of the, the, um, the reasons you have for money management. And then of course, um, when we dive further into the discussion, we'll be able to extrapolate some of the um, approaches and methods we can undertake to address those. So I'll, I'll open um, with, with that. All right. All right, Trevor, I see you smiling. That means you have something on your mind. <laughs> well, I think you mentioned, you mentioned two, two, two factors I want a little bit more um, elaborating on. And, you know, brothers, we could, we could, we could talk about the issue of um, the lack of understanding as and I put it in, in simple terms that um, savings doesn't have to be huge lump sum, but small, small sums add up <laughs> over time. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's amazing what putting aside 25 or uh, 50 or 100 dollars a month, right? Could add up to over 10 years or 15 yeah. years, <laughs> right? And you clearly had articulated that. So the lack of of, of um, planning, and then the, the issue of acknowledging the weaknesses. I think um, that was kind of uh, well, something we are aware of, but I don't think a lot of us pay attention to that. Yeah, because we really think that we are we are the, we are God's gift to every situation. We could handle everything. Yeah. Right. So I want us to talk a little bit about that with regards to to money management, because most men. And you link it to marriage, they think, you know, they should rule in that area. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they the boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Your yeah. wife might be a better sh a shooter <laughs> or a more virtuous investor, as proof yeah. of what you want tells us. So yeah. I want to have a little discussion on that. Well, I'll start off by saying um, if you're saving, you have to be saving for a purpose, right? And this is why I say that you have to be specific. In other words, the acronym of, of it is called SMART, specific, measurable, um, achievable, um, reliable, or relevant rather, 
and um and time bomb right nice. so you don't just um save for no reason there must be a purpose and then saving uh, so are you saving to um to go on a family trip or saving sufficiently so that you could attain the down payment you need to purchase a piece of land um, or you can buy cash i don't know but it has to be specific and um it requires you to sit down um, with yourself and if you are weak in that area this is where you sought you seek help and help might be well within the confines of your home it might be your wife it might be um, a child of yours and you walk backwards right so the cost of whatever it is is ten thousand, and this is the year in 2028 i plan to have that ten thousand, right 2028 um from now is probably in excess of um 36 months um so i divide ten thousand by 36 and i know how much i need to save per month you know that's you saving for a purpose mm -hmm. some some people do um really don't have any particular purpose because they don't know what their plans are and to me that is where the problem is right because if you don't have a plan it is almost suggesting that you don't have a vision right um where you part of a family as a man what what's the plans for your family uh, 2025 2026 um are you just on autopilot hoping that things will just automatically spring up it does not happen that way you have to write it down not even type it on the computer. There's something more powerful when you hold a pen to a piece of paper and actually write it. Um, and when you do so, it, it, it does something to you. I mean, you have to really do it to understand it. It, it makes it realistic. Um, There's something powerful about the pen. And you, you put action, deliberate actions into it. Now, I want to tell you, if you don't, if you don't know this by now, that savings is a bill. Eh? So just like your bank bill and your water bill and you know and so on, uh, phone, it is actually an expense. Mm -hmm. So you cannot pay all the bills and do everything and then hoping what is left as a residue is what you're going to have. You try and put into a savings. No. The savings has to be treated as an expense. So if it's $20 a month, you pay $20 as a bill to that special savings account or wherever you have, and um, and you pay your bill and so on. And then what is left as a residue, you could then decide what you want to do that after. Should I put more into the savings or should I use that residue for whatever else? But it is an expense. And that expense, as Brother Trevor mentioned, um, is not is not really so much the amount, but first, rather, it's an attitude that you have to develop to save. Right. And you could start with $1. In fact, start with what you can afford, and you would ultimately find out sooner rather than later. Yeah, you start with $1, next month you feel you could put a little bit more. And as time goes, you feel you could increase it a bit, and it becomes a whole attitude towards it, right? But then it has to be, you must have a purpose. Um, you know, I, I really don't buy into the narrative too much that, you know, you're just savings for, you're just saving for no particular. Right. <laughs> it, it, when, if that is happening to you now, men, um, I would say I'm almost certain a few things. One, you are on a bit unclear about even your own um, purpose and, and ministry in, in life right um because if you if you can't even define what that is that means you're not even saving to save into that right so, and even for your own family as to what your plans and programs for next month next year next five years right um those things we do not leave to chance no interestingly a lot of us men we happen to be part of groups organizations in the church even on work and we uh, a lot of us get involved in those that are planning right we're part of a group we having um some dinner to raise funds for um some ministry right like men's ministry or whatever or we're part of an organization and you know the organization has its own plans and programs that it has to run and we are actively involved 
in exercises like budgeting, making sure, you know, you know, we have our expenses down pack, you know, against what we have as revenue and, and so on. We do it for organizations and we we um, we we advance the the growth and development of organizations, right? But we do not do it for our own assembly. We do not do it for our own homes. Um, and that's a strange thing that, you know, we even get um, employee of the year um, for executing such a good job. <laughs> and we do so poorly at our homes. Uh, why is that? Why are we paying so little attention to the finances of our home? Um, and it requires us honestly to admit to ourselves that we have a problem. We need help, right? And I know we don't like showing our hands to say it because the ego thing, you know, it's uh, it's huge, but part and parcel of um, advancing and really helping manage your finances to drop the ego. I'll tell you this, I'm a banker and I've been a banker for um, over 26 years. But when it comes to the managing, and I invo I'm heavily involved in a lot of strategic um, and programs in, in, in the bank. In fact, uh, uh, the largest bank on the island, uh, currently Grenada Cooperative Bank, where I work, and the third largest in the OECS, right? But at home, the financial guru is not me. Is not <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so happy that you actually went there because... It's um, my wife. <laughs> that's why i said i'm happy that you went there because yeah we understand that could be an area of challenge for men you know because we are man we feel that we should be the one managing everything no and the another day right one thing i would always stay alive until the mindset is changed is what you have been taught Mm -hmm. You know, unless you you were taught really well by your parents and they made it a priority, um, a priority to teach you some things regarding yeah. finances, mm -hmm. you would you would get married and go into marriage with your own mm -hmm. ideology or whatever mm -hmm. you think is from right. the blocks from the block. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I don't. I don't believe that. Um, what is right for me might be right for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to sit here and I'm in bishop and say to you, do it my way. But it is wise that you find a workable solution for your home mm -hmm. and let it be something that is going to uplift your home and is going to be able to see growth and progress rather than you, you take a stance that is against what your spouse and as we talking to married people. But again, before you were married, what were you doing with your money as a single wow. young chap? What were you doing? Were you, were you, did you have any plans for yourself? I mean, that could be another era of challenge because my daughter, if I have one, wants to date a man, I need to find out what, what is his plan. And after yeah. asking her, how do you fit in, the, in, in that plan? You right. understand? And right. vice versa, a man should be asking, you know, a woman, what's your plan? Because if you do have a plan, is where your money is going to basically, you're going to follow, the money going to follow your plan. And if you have no plans, as Roger rightfully said, what's going to happen is, you're still going to follow where your plan is, which is no plan. So yeah. at the end of the day, is it that you're wasting it or you're investing it? Is that using it wisely? Or are you just playing the fool with it? And hence you find a lot of men succumb to drugs and alcohol. They would spend so much money by the bar. A man like me, you won't find me there because to me, that's a waste of money. And I've learned that since I'm a young, I'm a young man. I mean, in my teenage years, going to party, Roger and Trevor and Bishop. This was my style. I'll make a budget for drinking, right? And if that budget is $10, that's it for the night. Now, if I'm in that party and the drink done, and there's a, a pipe inside it, I'll go and fool the bottle in the pipe. You check up saying, and I'll come back, yeah. drink that water in that bottle. Nobody knows we in the dark. You understand? Mm -hmm. I drink the water. As in our side, my bath for the night. And when it's done, I go back there and take another up. I full up. Listen, all I ask, I'm thirsty. That's all. I need water to hydrate. Nobody knows. Pride could kill you sometime. See, let, me, let, me, let me tell you, this is a pet area of mine. Um, 
Which and is, I, I'll tell you this, right? Right. Brothers who are looking at this program, mm -hmm. men who are not live, but will look at the, re the, the rebroadcast of this, I'll tell you this. Drop the ego. Stop thinking that you're the best at everything. Right. And because you're the man, you have the final C. And some people even find scriptures on that for you. I tell you. <laughs> when God gave us an helpmate, God gave us an helpmate in marriage. No, I'm speaking to the married man. And he made us one. <laughs> There's no his and hers. <laughs> There's ours. And what we do is leverage the strengths of each other. Right. Right? I don't know anything about gardening. My wife grew up in the garden. So when we go out in the garden and I'm with her, I learn something every time. Right. And here, here what is important as a man now. Here is where the ego should really be challenged positively. After you learn it, then you'll get better of it. You'll get better than her. Mm. Right? So that she doesn't have to show you that again. No, you could take the lead if you're so concerned about lead. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. You don't sit back now and let mm. her continue doing it. Mm. So I, 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 I leverage her strength. But if at the same time, mm. she continues to be the best at it, and we agree as one flesh that this is how it's going to be, does it really matter as to what any other person think or feel, that is not even their concern. The point is it benefits my family and I am happy about it. And that's how you should see it. A lot of us, the whole ego thing come because we're looking to see what we are, you know, this other person might say, right? Or that other person may say this about that. that. That is not what God, when God made us one flesh in marriage, that's not what he intended, never. So I say that if you have this issue, forget what other men, what other person going to think, what they feel. Um, if they think you're less of a man, you're soft, right? Brother, it's you and your wife and your family. And whatever working, let it work. Hmm. Bishop, well, Bishop I, 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 you're listening very intently, Bishop. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> His mic is muted. So. I'm mute, I'm mute, Bishop. Mm -hmm. it, taking it in because it's um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing to understand your you know, the organizational. You see, sometimes the challenge is organizational intelligence. Mm -hmm versus uh emotional intelligence mm -hmm. because sometimes um you know i i was planning to in the early go on a date so i was saving my money to go on the date so i didn't know that the date would lead to marriage i i didn't know i was going to marry um my wife to be so I'm saving, but I realized the night that I'm going on the date, I'm looking for a suspenders because my father wears suspenders. <laughs> I'm looking for a tie because the, the average young man not going on with ties, but I'm looking for my tie. <laughs> so I put on my tie, put on my suspenders and I meet up with my date. Have my money's thinking about what to spend. But when my wife came out, she came out in a pantsuit. <laughs> I never see my mother in a pantsuit. <laughs> never see my sisters in a pantsuit. So I say, hey, this thing, this date off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> there is something, there's something called, um, it's mm. called 
um misogamy misogamy yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah and sometimes that could be the challenge because i didn't know that i was looking at what was happening in my home mm-hmm. whether when it was financial order or how mom and dad were functioning the only time i realized that what <laughs> was happening was affecting me is when i saw this uh situation so sometimes it's bringing order and bringing financial especially yeah. financial order yeah organizational intelligence versus emotional mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it, it, it's a big sometimes that could be the factor mm-hmm. you know because sometimes men would hear another man speak and they say well easy for you yeah mm-hmm. you know and that could be such a, a challenge at times mm-hmm. yeah because sometimes we could be dealing with family and community peculiarities yeah yeah, yeah. With, yes you know, yeah. your secret season all kinds of things happening there clannish oddities mm-hmm. and it's like drilling is like pulling teeth what i like about what um uh roger is saying is that you 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 still have to you still have to model you still have to 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 make the stand because you'll be shocked to know that there are men that are looking at you how you dress how you drive mm-hmm. and you you still have to lay the foundation and you still have to tell them this is how it's done you know yeah. you still have to tell them how it's done it's difficult it's not easy yeah you know as as he was speaking there you know i really um it really came up to me that this whole thing about Caribbean men and even men in the kingdom of God, we have some some strange beliefs. <laughs> as yeah. as Roger said, that is is not biblically based. We have some strange ideas and visions in our mind. Right. And I and I had to ask myself as Roger was talking. Were we indoctrinated, mm-hmm. you know, by community environment to believe that certain kinds of life we can we will never achieve, we will never attain, you know, and and some of us we we accept it. Mm-hmm. So even though or just our, our handling and dealing with money and 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 wealth and 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 and, and resources. It's it's a strange way we are str- when you look at how men operate. It's strange. It's it's. It, I mean, I I don't know where that kind of culture came from, <laughs> but we definitely have an issue with wealth and riches. But we have a know, serious problem with that. You know, brother Trevor, you would be surprised to know, or maybe you would, you you don't, that <clears throat> a lot of us um, when it come to investments actually think that so let's look at land for example because this is a classic one and i see it uh, where i work that there are a lot of men who believe that certain lands based on where it is located mm-hmm. is not for people like me so it yes. is for them, it's for yeah. them. Mm-hmm. and you ask yourself i don't know if this is something ingrained through slavery and I'm not the one particular that I like to ascribe to mm-hmm. the experiences of slavery mm-hmm. and, and use it as an excuse to justify my actions now, right? Mm-hmm. Because we, we, we are big people, we're knowledgeable, and we're supposed to know better. Mm-hmm. But there you have, there, there are opportunities for us to grab sometimes, um, and we don't because we think it's not for us. Mm-hmm. Strange enough, and and you know um, that is why it is so important for us to really look into ourselves as men to understand sometimes why we take certain actions. You know, go back as far back to understand as far back as you can remember. What are some of the things that impacted your life growing up? You will yeah. certainly remember them because the brain don't ever forget those high impact items. Mm-hmm. And, and see what it is and, and try and address it. And don't think what God has put here on earth is for, is, it was given to us. 
to utilize. It, there's nobody that have more privilege than than any other person. Mm -hmm. We are all equal to equal stewards to it, right? But we do have a very strange way of thinking as men, Christian men, as included. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll say this, that um, um, the bishop mentioned about, uh, touched on it, about the, the, your surroundings and your environments. And yes, that has a, a very important factor. And I would suggest, uh, without jumping too quickly yet, but one of the solutions that you want to engage in as men in your homes, right? consult with um, your wife and privately in your corner, try and come to an understanding as to who is stronger at what, okay? If you're not able to bring yourself to that, <laughs> there's another problem that exists that you need to sort out. And that's the, the problem of trust. Right. Right. Um, so it is probably suggesting there are other issues in your in your marriage, in your union that needs fixing. Mm -hmm. Right. And it cannot be slighted or swept under the capita. You see how one thing could affect the other. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you you have to fix them. Now, um, one of one of the things we did at home that that has worked for us, um, my wife and I, with the, with the children when they were very young. We, um, we had a game called Family Economy, right? So I've given practical solutions to this discourse on the, the subject. Family Economy, we priced everything inside the house, right? Absolutely everything. To use the toilet, you have to pay. To bathe, you have to pay. To sleep, you have to pay. To have breakfast, lunch, anything. Based on what channels you're looking at, if it's news, National Geographic, and so on, it's free. If it's a movie channel and so on, you have to pay 50 cents. Um, every hour, but we priced it in such a way that we were able to give them as sufficient as $20 that's supposed to last them the month if they spend it prudently. And what we saw was very interesting. So we, <laughs> we had one who really stayed, he didn't seem to care, right? He's looking at the movies and he paying 50 cents every hour, you, you know? <laughs> and then before the week up, he's broke. And then he's asking his sister for money. It gives us an opportunity to teach his teacher, his teacher, his um, sister. Well, you, you could borrow him, but he has to pay interest, mm -hmm. right? He learned the concept of of um, of owing and, and 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 having to pay back your debt and so on. And they they also had opportunities to make revenue in the house, like when they do their chores or they wash down the vehicle and so on as well. So in addition to the twenty dollars, they could have made more money. Right. Um, and then one of the girls started to get very creative. We gone into the bedroom at night and we haven't seen her. Then we realized she was her brother sleeping because she don't want to pay. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of them, one of them started to not use the toilet but to go outside <laughs> and number one. Right? So it gives us an opportunity oh, yeah. to talk about the environment and the importance of keeping the environment clean and tight. <laughs> But they, they, it, it really helped them to understand the concept of money and money yeah. management and so on. So right. even in your own homes, there's a cycle that you, you could break. You may not have had that, right. home, but here is a way you could break it by getting the children involved in such a game. And then outside of a game, getting them involved in the whole budgeting exercise, which is another thing, right? Mm -hmm. That there is, you only have this amount of income. That is as much as you could spend so you have to, you can have a life that is far beyond what you're, what you're earning. Mm -hmm. So you have to adjust your life, right? Mm -hmm. So that you could, you could fit within that income. That's right. And if you're having a challenge in doing it, or you choose not to, because you want to have a life that exceeds that, then the other, of the other side of the, the budgeting table is to increase your revenue, mm -hmm. increase your income. How do you do that? Several ways. Look at your strengths again. You see, it's an honest discussion with yourself and your right. partner as to how you can do that, right? And um, I'll tell you this: when you do that, life becomes easier because everybody, if they're part of the budget ex budgeting exercise, do not have any expectation that is beyond what you can meet. 
because everybody know the game plan. But it requires us. It's a deliberate action of us to do it. Yeah. Yeah. This cannot happen automatically. And once we leave it up to remote control, mm. the stresses of money and managing it will always be an issue. Mm -hmm. Investing, early investments, right? I could tell you that my wife and I has made the decision that as best as we can in terms of our advocacy, do not have the children purchase a vehicle when they just start to work. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a little secret, despite that this is going worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> that if it means that I hold a hand and jointly we go to the bank together and invest in land, mm -hmm. there's two of us taking the loan. Yeah. We are go borrow, I'll go lend you my car mm -hmm. when you need to go, right? I'm going to force you into it. Mm -hmm. Because there's something about the land that God has given us. That mm -hmm. is valuable. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it is a major start and has been mm -hmm. probably the most pivotal one mm -hmm. for a lot of um, well to do persons. Mm -hmm. But we cannot be thinking that there is something ungodly about that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not meant for me, it is meant for somebody else. No, we have to come out of that realm, right? Mm -hmm. And honestly get ourselves involved in investment opportunities land that is such right i i hate to um to to, to make this any um ad advertisement for my institution but currently you have a situation men where you could go into into core bank now without any money no down payment no money to pay legal fees or anything and buy a piece of land because the bank is giving you 100 percent financing you don't have to pay no legal fees. That's mortgage fees. You don't have to pay no loan fees. So it's like, which is the two most difficult things, the down payment and the legal fees. So it's like walking into the bank with your hands free and walking out with a piece of rock of the country. God. And yet still, you have a lot of men yeah. and a lot of young people mm -hmm. who are still not taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Right? And mm -hmm. it is the start. It is the start. Um, and, and to me, it is a blessing. Right? Well, it's a blessing. <laughs> a blessing. It's a blessing. But, but I understand that if as if a man, if it's a, a as a man, if you don't have it in you, right, uh, because of your environment, uh, yeah. or you grew up and so on, you just don't have it. But it is not an excuse for you not to get it. Yeah. Because yeah. within your own home circle, there's probably somebody with that strength. Mm -hmm. And we need to be just let go of our ego, pull that person in, whoever that is. I don't know. And say, hear what? I need help with this. How right. can you help? How can you help me with this? Yeah. It, you know, that's why when I was I was I was as I was just spending some time reflecting and having a conversation with God before I came down here tonight, the spirit of Lord said to me, His eyes is on the men. God's eyes is on us. This is our time, our opportunity to really break some cycles, break some strongholds, you know, and um and 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 and, and usher usher the next generation into into that that level of prosperity where God wants them to be. Our children, our grandchildren. Yeah, we have to. We have to to come to that place where we recognize, hey, bro, I can't do it by myself. I need help. I need some hand holding. I know that's why I say we could face the challenges together. You know, yeah. call a brother and say, bro, I want to buy a piece of land. You understand? I'm looking for a home. Yeah. How yeah. can you help? What advice do you have? And and what and that is what is 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 is, is a is is a hindering. You gotta take off the mask, <laughs> you know. And, and who says that you suppose that that it is is really only for you to do? And and I'm, I mean the only time I see people in Grenada coming to the bank uh, to do something jointly is if they're married or if it's a, a, a parent and a child on something. You don't see, at least locals, coming as a group, three men, four men, and say, hey, what, we want to buy this land, we're going to put on an apartment complex, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. right? I see people of different cultures doing it. 
Uh, us here in Grenada, black ethnic type, we seem to, if we can't do it on our, our, on, on our own, yeah. then we leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God is saying something bigger in fellowship, mm -hmm. right? That here is how I want you together to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you see that that day is a challenge for a lot of people yeah. because of the mindset you understand mm -hmm. not you said earlier on ego is one of the issues i think selfishness is another issue a lot of men have been taught here's what get it myself do it myself you understand they say there's a old proof of that say what if you go by yourself, mm -hmm. right? You, you won't really. Get, I can't. I don't remember it exactly, but they yeah. say if, if you go with others, you might go a little further. On like if you go by yourself, same thing that happens in marriage. When you see a group of men come together and form a company, it's a lot of different ideas, and there's respect, good communication, a lot of things happening in the background that can make, mm -hmm. you know, this whatever the vision is a reality. So a lack of that. When people don't have it for themselves, it's even worse because you, <laughs> man and woman trying to come together, you didn't have it, you can share it with your family. You talked about something that is so important in terms of being able to pass on something to your children. What you, you talked about is a wealth mindset. Not that I want to teach people to get into poverty. There are certain things as we know. If you purchase that today, the price is $2 today, but tomorrow, Pay attention to what's happening around. My eyes is on a piece of, a piece of um, something I hear the people talking about. I don't put it like that because I don't want to share it on the radio. I'm singing to somebody I'm saying. They, they go and tap in that area too. But something came to my attention and I say, wow, if that thing can happen in the next 10 years, the value of property in that area will significantly increase because of what I see happening. You know, pay attention to things like, if there is supermarkets here, there, there is healthcare here, there, there, you know what I mean? There are things close by, and you're building up in an area like that, the area automatically, the value of the area increase. We ain't going in financial finances one on one tonight. If you guys got something, it's all good. Um, I've extra at the time when we were doing the money talk, Roger was in there because, you know, I listened back to the money talk the other day, and I was like, wow. Yeah, I was. I was playing them out. Yeah, every yeah, now and then. Money talk, but, give but me some. I have a, I have a question I want to ask, and maybe Bishop could answer that or even Roger. Yeah. The, the question I have is, why is it so many people have the impression that Christianity, when you become a Christian, you take a vow of poverty? <laughs> Bishop, let me hear. Bishop, you let me hear you on that because. <laughs> I don't know if it's if it's if it has something that was that some some false teaching that came down through the ages, but we have the impression that <laughs> Christianity is is you know you take a vow of poverty. Yeah. You should just live life and just and that's it. No 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 seeking to to expand and increase and dominate. You understand in the earth, as the Bible says, to occupy. You know, being a man like Abraham. If I had the opportunity, I would want to be a man like Abraham. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. understand? I, 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 you understand? I don't want to be like Jacob who do all kind of trickery <laughs> to get what he went. But I want to be a man like Abraham who who, who just dominated his environment. He's, he built wells and, and he expanded his flocks, etc. That when the kings around saw him, they know this was a man who was blessed by God. Wow. Expand on that, please, sir. <laughs> as you mentioned it's an era you see abraham abraham was in an era where he received he received from god and he said thank you jacob had to be the releaser while isaac had to carry him mm -hmm. when it came to moses era moses god told moses unwrap the gift he said they never they never opened the possibilities and that's what mm -hmm. um our dear brother Duncan is, is, is uh, mentioning. Mm. They didn't open the possibilities. So when Moses came, God said, hey, they didn't know me even by this name. They didn't understand the, the, the fullness. They were, they were measuring me with a very little ruler. They were measuring me, not understanding the fullness. So just as um, Brother Duncan was sharing, we came from an era where even 
the, the songs, we were always trying to get home. I want to go to heaven and rest. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 70% of what we were saying and singing was trying to leave, get out. Mm -hmm. But now the kingdom age has come. Mm -hmm. The kingdom age has come with inheritances, mm -hmm. investments. Mm -hmm. It has come with uh, dominion. Mm -hmm. It has come with the seven blessings. Be fruitful, multiply. Mm -hmm. Not talking about children there. Talking about exponentially progressing mm -hmm. uh, have dominion you know that will dominate your sphere dominate yeah. yeah your gifts your talents are going to lead to a mm -hmm. shift in atmosphere so mm -hmm. we are coming out from that era where we were very much challenged and the enemy loved to know that the believer was not thinking about investment not thinking about long term not thinking about the family not thinking about that property down there so we are coming into a kingdom age where uh, the plans uh, being released. And what, what we see is that these plans are defeating the mindset that was once there, you know, the generation. Because when you look at the um, most, of, most of what we are speaking on, we have inherited from a generation that was really um, sh short in sight. And as you mentioned, slavery, it was really designed to destroy. It was a destroyer in the Caribbean region. Hmm. It was not, we were not supposed to be here. We were not supposed to be having these conversations. We were not supposed to use technology. We were not supposed to own property. Hmm. So you have that mindset. Yeah. And Abraham, God said to Abraham, you have to walk in this land. You have to look up at the stars. Don't look at the dust. Hmm. Look at the stars. Because I'm not going to add. You see, one plus one is two. Mm. But when you <laughs> multiply one by one, mm. you get one. He said, I'll <laughs> multiply you. So it's an era that we are entering into that is defeating all that the enemy tried to do. And that's what Paul was trying to show the church at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. when, they, when they got to Ephesus and they saw what these uh, silversmiths were doing, they saw mm. the work of the Copper smiths mm -hmm. and the people spent two hours worshiping Diana. Mm -hmm. They said, Wow, how could we defeat this thing? Mm -hmm. And Paul said, You gotta be strong. The first thing he said, You better be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then Paul said, Now unto the principalities mm -hmm. and powers in heavenly places might be known. The, the church has to come of age. Yeah. Which mm. has to have the information, mm. and we we have to be. In other words, the the violent take it by force. You have to whatever you have right now. You have to use force to, to keep it, and you have to use greater force to even move from a position that says, "I don't think it could be done." Uh, I hear what Duncan is saying, but <laughs> I don't think it could. You have to use force to get out of that. Out of that, you're right? Because when we when we look at Proverbs, it mm. says, "Wisdom she." Mm -hmm. She has built a house. Oh, yeah. She has you in a seven pillars. Yeah. She, the reason why they're saying that is because understanding is the male in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is the female. You have to get them on a hot date. Mm -hmm. You have to get them to get together. You have to get them to kiss in your life so that you could defeat whatever the enemy... Ignorance. <laughs> you, know, you know, and, and that, that's why... Um, <laughs> Uh, the enemy is attacking men That's right. and marriages too. Mm -hmm. right? Because once you get those two, then everything else is automatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think men, um, it's time that we, we, we see that and uh, stop pretending that we don't know. We know. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of us just don't want to be counted. Mm -hmm. There's work to be done, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? There's work, a lot of work to be done, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll tell you, um, <laughs> the, the 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 men in Grenada, right? The men that is part of so many different assemblies, mm -hmm. that that wealth creation and that ability to manage your finance, right? Yeah, let me just give you another practical solution to it. 
I need a plumber right now. I honestly need a plumber. I have a pipe that is had a slow leak some weeks now. Well, probably over a month. And um, the plumber that I, I'm depending on, um, um, you know, is just so busy doing so many other different things. And, and I choose not to call anybody because, you know, he does a very good job. Ask me, do I know any other plumber within the assemblies? <laughs> I do not know the skill sets, the competencies, and so on that is within my own assembly. Mm -hmm. And there's well creation there. Mm -hmm. I'm probably someone who, um, you know, I based on where I sit, I might be able to, to you know, say something. When when God puts us in in different positions and That's places, so. there's a reason why we are there. And when we say, thank you, Lord, you, are, you have blessed me. I'm so happy and we praise him and so on. That's the, the work and even comments yet. There's a reason why we are there and we are not making use of it at all. Yeah, that's you true. Know, you know, <laughs> I, I had this note here as, as, as Bishop was talking as, um, you know, I believe we are, we are, quickly come into a stage where you know as as jesus said you know this gospel must be put must be preached mm -hmm. before the end come but for that to happen you know it will require mega resources because we see how the world is so dynamic now if we're going to invest into 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 proclaiming the gospel to every nation to every tribe it requires mega resources because we have gone past the days of satellite and all of that now. You understand? We are in an era where, where I mean, you, 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 could, you could be here, you could be in Nairobi, you could be in, 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 in Jerusalem at the same time. But for the church to, to, to occupy that space, it requires resources, mega resources. And, 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 and I think God is ready to do that transfer of wealth. That you talk about the wealth of the ungodly is stored up for the righteous. I believe that we are in a season where that is happening, uh, but we got to position ourselves. You know, we mm -hmm. have to like like a woman about to give birth. Mm -hmm. You know, when yeah. she about there, there, there is a midwife. There is a they are there waiting to catch it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think men are we have to wake up. Look through the look through the assemblies, um, yes, brother. Yeah. You would see. And lots of those assemblies, doctors, lawyers, yes, lawyers. pharmacists, yeah. bankers, uh, engineers, just name it. Okay, so you have this much resources. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just to put in the work down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, that's awesome, guys. And um, <laughs> I must say, uh, I, learned, I learned something tonight. Thank you for the tip, Roger, mm -hmm. by way of um, what you call the game. Family economy. Family economy. <laughs> that, that's an excellent tip. I, um, I, I I listened to you talking and I I said ah, the boys would be very excited to play that game. I had <laughs> one, but then it wasn't as this one. I think this one is even more practical. So I, I'll probably contact you for some more details <laughs> and see how we can create two investors. I have an idea what would happen. I know I have some work to do, but nonetheless, mm. with God, all things are possible. So we we'll leave that there regarding managing finances for now. Because we have two other areas hopefully we can touch. I'm going to pass it over to Bishop and he's going to lead the foundation as we continue the discussion. And, um, you know, managing challenges in the home. Yeah. Um, maintaining order in the home rather. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, for men, that's another area mm -hmm. that, you know, Roger kind of touch into some other area there in terms of what we just talk about in, in light of the game. But, there are other areas in the home that men, they are challenges, a challenge for men. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, Bishop mm -hmm. Lady Foundation and whatever, wherever the Lord leads us to have a conversation like we just did, we'll do that again. Mm -hmm. All right, Bishop, go ahead. Flow is yours. Yeah, even as um, Brother Roger was uh, speaking, we, we saw the, the home as a dynamic, it's a dynamic platform. Mm -hmm. And, um, leadership is both you, you see when he was explaining it's both physical and spiritual you know your children have to see you worship they have to see 
as a man, they, they must see you worship. They must see you in prayer. And 90% of some of the things that we're dealing with is the visibility of that. Even when Paul was telling Timothy concerning, um, he said, I, I want the men to, to lift hands and worship. And he said, don't do it with wrath. Don't do it with doubting. And those are some of the things that are the challenge. And the answer is right there. So he's telling Timothy in um, 1 Timothy 2, he's telling Timothy, listen, I will that men pray and lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Right there in that text, I discover that the answers to order, the answers to some of the, the most emotional problems is prayer. And the, the, the verse there is telling us that the hindrance to prayer is wrath and doubting. The issue now is how you balance that, how you, how you deal with that. Because your emotions produce justice. So there are so many things that are in the home, but leadership again is both physical. I mean, you have to do your daily routine. You have to manage your family. You have to go out there and work. That's the physical part. But the spiritual part must be done. The spiritual task must be done to bring order because order is not an easy thing to bring in because bringing order, you have to maintain it. You see, because leadership is also situational. So there are situations that will come to test your strategies you come to test some of the things that you say there was one man who says um i'm the maximized man here because he went to a conference so he came back from the conference and he says from tonight i'm the maximized man here he didn't see his wife for three weeks on the fourth week he saw her a little from this eye so you have to you have to know that when it comes to putting order in place, you have to begin to sit down and look at some of the dynamics that are changing when it comes to relational issues. Even as uh, Brother Duncan was mentioning, there are so many women earning now more than men. There are so many women that are heading into the fields of uh, degrees, they're having degrees, doctorates, and they're going for it. They're going for it because we're in that time span. We're in that era where women are rising up. And to bring the order in, when you look at even what Peter was saying, he says, listen, when it comes to likewise the husband, Peter was uh, adding to what Paul was saying. Peter was saying, listen, you have to dwell in that space with knowledge. You have to do it according to knowledge. And then the challenge is lots of men don't spend time reading because what we are in an era now where this device could really split you down the middle. This device could take from you because you spend so many moments trying to get information. But we have to spend that time reading, spend that time understanding that things have drastically changed. And um, we as men, we have to know that with the changes comes the, the law of control. You get to the traffic light, something is going to be in control. It's either the red, the green, or the amber. You get to the airport, the pilot better be in control. You get to the ferry, you're going over to carry a coup, the captain better be in control. So we have to we have to know when when we are praying what are we praying about what are we lifting our hands what are we saying is it just for visibility no our children must see us but we are praying for the presence of god to control because many times we cannot handle some of the situations that we we face because the inverse law to control is the law of accident accidents will happen without a plan. Even as um, Brother 
Roger was saying, you, you have to have some kind of long-term or short-term plan. Without a plan, the, the accidents will pile up and they are going to say, here we are. But you have to know that leadership is also dimensional. To bring order in the home, if you're dealing with a situation, you have to know when to move on. Because if you keep dwelling without resolution, without counsel, it's going to fester. You're going to wake up with that thing on your mind. You may not even sleep because that thing is just rolling over in your spirit. So sometimes we, we have to know that there's a time you have to move on. If you look at, um, for instance, Acts chapter 3, there's a beautiful story of three men. Peter and John, they're going up together. So there must be someone that you could bounce things off of. And they're going up at the hour of prayer. So the, you, the moment you see them moving at the hour of prayer, you know that there's timing. Management of time, management even of your mind, management of your talents, management of your emotions, very important that we check in sometimes. Spend a little time by yourself as men and just check into your emotions, check into some of the things that are really happening in your transactions. And when you look at Acts chapter 3 carefully, you see them going up together at the hour of prayer and they get to, they, they meet a man at the gate and this man does not have access. So there are so many men that don't have access to order or the, even the understanding of order. And they stop. And they stretch their hands to him, you see. But this man is focusing on them because he's thinking with his expectation that they're going to give him something. They're going to give him something substantial. Because it's not just one of them, but two of them. And what you see there is the, the, the expectation again. There's so much expectations on men because everywhere you turn you see uh there's a great deal of talk about men and so many men for instance if you have a uh, health fear you're going to see lots of women come but you would not see the men getting close to those boots or those tents or the activity because they know what is expected and when you see the um the whole picture of what's happening there Peter begins to address him and said, we don't have silver. We don't have gold. In other words, the content, if you, you, you cannot give what you don't have. And that is why programs like these are so important because when you bring an order into a situation, you have to have content. You have to have something uh, that will give you information and then comprehension. Because you find lots of times the majority of men, they don't have the educational ability to even... Uh, address certain things. They need someone uh, to speak. They need someone to help them navigate. And herein lies some of the issues, especially in our islands and in our nations, where you have uh, men who are afraid to even try. And then you begin to see them lifting this man up, support. So lots of uh, issues that we are facing in the home, we need to really give support. And most of the times, the support may come in the form of literature. And then you see a challenge where some men would not even venture because they're not able to even articulate what the literature is saying. So we have to come up with devices where you could scan to a cell phone, scan and help in areas where the information could be comprehended and received in such a way where the ego and the help does not collide. Because when ego collides with help, sometimes it's taken the wrong way. Because ego says, hey, I, I have this. And the void says, you need that. The void says, I need help. But the voice does not come over as, I need it. So you have so many things happening there within the home and lots of our young men are really challenged because they are seeing the fathers unable to go to the next level. They are seeing the fathers, 
they they love their sons they love i i don't i i never met a father who does not love his son and is not proud of his son but you have that giant in the room that is trying to block the next generation and so you you have to now look at some of the things that would help because leadership is also um critical leadership is critical so not only is it situational not only is it um physical and spiritual but it is critical it is critical and we must make that statement very strong that we need especially in the home to maintain order the the first thing is to ensure that your family see you in worship don't be afraid to cry you have to be able that one of the secrets that we have to release the men is that you must be able to cry there must be a time that you shed some tears because if you don't sometimes that is transferred to the next generation and there's so much pent up anger there's so much pent up rage in that wow. and you're wondering how could we get this rage to come out because we think in pictures and most of the um most of the things that we are able to articulate is from what we saw happen in the previous generation what we saw happen you know and when you look at acts chapter 3 you see where this man is at a gate this gate is an excellent gate this gate is beautiful but he can't go in can't access it there are so many men that cannot access order yeah. and access the uh the ability to move past mm -hmm. their last failure move past their mm -hmm. last situations mm -hmm. and um the moment they said what we have we are going to give to you and the support systems immediately took him by the hand yeah uh, and strength came immediately and he was able to go in you see victory victory is not absence of problems true victory is presence of power so the moment power comes you begin to see the mobility and what we see is uh visibility in acts chapter 3 visibility so when you're bringing order there's so many things that are happening that will create the order because sometimes order in the home uh just comes by you the man just taking up your socks laying your socks together putting your pens in order ensuring that uh everything that is out of order comes into order in the physical space before it can even register on the emotional or psychological you know and it's not is not easy but it can be done it can be done because um I remember some of the um, women from 9/11 who lost their husbands who were first responders. And when they interviewed some of them, they said, um, you know what we do? We drop socks on the floor. We leave the toilet seat up. And they said, why are you doing that? And they said that's what we used to argue over. This mm. order. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love the way how you um you lead that foundation i think yeah. I, a few things i can um <laughs> reiterate here is the fact that you know people tend to start men in particular so this we start trying to correct things the wrong way mm. you know we try to bring order by being you know uh, these sounding brass you just noise noise you're talking talking you, you need to talk in the right place because of course there is an enemy that wants to create create chaos and disorder in the home but um sometimes you're fighting against the flesh and the blood too much and if you take the time to even listen as um you talked about wisdom and knowledge if you take the time to study god's word he's going to direct your path i mean seriously I had a situation a long to go long ago where sometimes you know the family they they have the young ones they they have things they have their own their mindset and something that they want you to do for them as a father as a man just the same they have desires of their own probably they're looking at things on the television and they probably saw something and they say wow I wish I could do that 
And they know very well it is daddy that can do that. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that you would give everything that they want. Because you, you can you can say, I love you so much, I'm going to give you this. And the timing is wrong. It's an opportunity, as Roger said, okay, let's think about how we're going to get that. What are you willing to do if you can? Um, what are you willing to forfeit if you can so that I could make this possible? Because sometimes it takes sacrifice and hard work, as you talked about earlier on. Be able to, to, to push past something because when the kids want certain things it's an opportunity for you to start thinking too not to say to yourself or if your wife wants something for you to say in yourself well, i can't get that and that's it i mean roger is a father trevor is a father you are father bishop i'm a youngest father here i just said to me that they say boy i don't pass this thing on them this stage you're at right now i pass that already <laughs> so i am here i am learning from you guys tonight and what i'm saying is that wisdom has its place even when you pray in the midst of the kids and your wife, I believe if you tap into the realm of the spirit, what you can't say to them directly, you could pray it wisely in their presence and they would hear. If it comes in, they would hear. But if you just take the, the, the if you if you can't even pray for wisdom and you take the, the side of um, saying, oh boy, watch now, I can't do that. You're not going to get it. Again, you're not even giving them opportunity to grow in faith, mm -hmm. you know? You, they may see you as a man that just fear, fear, fear. You just fear to do stuff and you don't want to overcome no challenges that's in your way as a father or, or as a leader in the home. You understand what I'm saying? So, of course, it starts with God because you want to use whatever it is to show them that, here's what, I may not have the, the solution to this, but I know God can do it. So let's pray to God together. I'm going to teach you. Now in that moment, as you talk about having understanding of the word, I'm going to teach you. So I have no, that is pushing me to go and find it, right? Understand it and then reveal it to them. Mm -hmm. And then as, and then let us all depend on God based on what we just, what was revealed to you based on what the Spirit of the Lord showed me. You understand? And then we go into prayer now and we wait on God. But, we, you know, we're not moving fast. We're not anxious for nothing. We know by prayer and petition. We make a request with thanksgiving and if god's if it's god's desire that we get what you want then he will make it happen in the end is a valuable lesson that is taught in a practical sense that you're passing on a model now to the kids that as they grow older they say they will say well daddy always take this approach and it worked pray god know that it worked you now have to have the faith in god that it worked because they will benefit from it so later they wouldn't do any and anything um, to get what they want. You understand? There's a hard part in it. I heard a young man say the other day, not a young man. There was a young man. I listened to his story and that had me thinking a whole lot. Real quick, eh? the man said, when he was young, his father died at age 16. And after that, he, he, he had to take care of his younger siblings. And his father left him with a uh, overdraft in the bank that he also had to pay you understand so he was under tremendous pressure and he took the road the, the part of selling drugs and the violent lifestyle and had persons there and he gained respect i mean that's a serious real life thing that's happening that happened right here in grenada where did that got him and his friends and his brothers in jail but when he went in jail that's where he learned some things now and he came back out you understand a different man but one of the things he said was nobody no you have a father so if he say nobody taught him that means he was also looking for men in the community you know to see him and to pour into him and let him realize hey there's a there's something more than that you can do but in the absence of that wisdom or that information being passed yeah. on be it in the home or in the community you would have a reoccurrence of this type of situation as we can see happening and you, if you talk to any violent young man roger you would hear they say something like that my mother or my father was not they were not there for me they didn't treat me right or somebody you know wasn't there to to really give me that support when i was becoming like my friends who probably had the same issue you know what i mean so the teaching has to be right and it must start with start with god the almighty must be present Absent of that, <laughs> I don't know, is a miracle. 
because I can speak for myself, but let me allow you guys to continue the conversation. Yeah. You see, being, being a man, there are three things that we, we have to look at. Being a man is being identified. Mm. A man identified. Being male is being analyzed. Because being male is a whole chemical response right there. Mm -hmm. And then when you when you wear the hat of a husband, it's a whole nother level mm -hmm. that is added. Being a man is not easy. <laughs> because the the soul of the the soul of the man is something else. The mm -hmm. soul and the spirit could only be analyzed. The man yeah. in his face could be identified. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. soul and the spirit can only be analyzed, only be analyzed. So sometimes there are things that need uh, psychological intervention. There are things that definitely need uh, prayer and must be sustained because many times things that need to be broken are not sustained and it must be sustained over a long period of time because in in the book of revelation he says to, to whom i love i rebuke and chasten <laughs> i rebuke a rebuke doesn't take three days you know a rebuke mm -hmm. a rebuke could take five sometimes six years <laughs> and then the lord could chasten you for for 20 years <laughs> not an ordinary thing it's yeah a process. <laughs> See? It's a process. Because um, when, when you read how the Apostle Paul addresses for a number of times, it says, husbands, love your wives. Because we, 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 we have to remember that. That's something that must be uh, taught and received. Mm -hmm. Again, sometimes uh, in the home, we don't have a teachable spirit. Mm -hmm. There you go. You see? You don't have a teachable spirit. Because someone may have said to you, that you you hard headed, and you you take that to mean that I'm not going to get it. So there are so many um, folks who their soul have closed and has not been analyzed. But you see the man, he functions. Mm -hmm. You see his face, you identify him. But the soul and the spirit has not been analyzed as to what the communication has been there. The first thing that God did is, is touch the man. Mm -hmm. When he touched him, he was speaking to him without saying a word. Hmm. So when he touched Adam, it was time for sleep because sleep is built into the system. Mm -hmm. He go to sleep. At the moment that happened, God was bringing in the, the language. He was building the languages there because men communicate in silence. Men communicate through viewing and visualizing mm -hmm. but vision doesn't deal with people mm -hmm. you see vision sees systems but people children families spouses they need vision without the vision the family as duncan was saying the family gonna perish yeah mm -hmm. but vision doesn't see people you <laughs> can see systems yeah processes yeah so to to get the equation balance, you have to be able to look at what vision contains. Right. So, Brother Roger, speaking on finances and visioning, we have to now say, look, what does the vision contain? Because vision has components. Mm -hmm. Is it actual? Could I really do that? Yes, it can be done. Vision is also retro. Mm -hmm. Where did you come from? Right. What did you learn? What did your mother tell you about men? What did your father tell you about women? What's the one person you admire? What gets you angry? You see, mm -hmm. vision is also prophetic. There are many men who have had uh, things spoken over their life. For instance, I met a man who was very successful. But mm -hmm. he goes through a bottle of perfume in, in two months because someone told him at one time that you smell really bad. So that affected him. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Just that word coming from someone close to him caused him to always over, he's always praying, always praying. <laughs> yeah. I, I, as I, y'all were talking there, I took a note that um, with 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 the whole issue of of um, you know, what Bishop was was speaking on there, the you know order in the home. The, the issue for a lot of us is 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 moving on from the, from the last failure, <laughs> right? <laughs> moving from you know, and similar with Duncan, you might you, you might invest and 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 it didn't succeed. As you as you as you expected, because your expectation might have been too high anyway. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, our culture we we like a lot of get rich quick schemes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? We don't invest for the long term and let it invest, let it grow. Mm -hmm. You know, so you talk about land, etc. But even if even if even if the, the man who, who 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 runs a shop, right? Most people think mm -hmm. that a shop. You know, you run a shop and you and in in a, in a year you'll get rich. <laughs> uh, you run a shop for twenty years and and that's how you you accumulate you you know wealth. You 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 accumulate savings because you make your, your profit might be might be might be twenty twenty cents twenty five cents or a dollar on each item, but over twenty years you you sell it. Let's say you're selling you have you, over in the shop you, have, you might have a hundred and fifty different items, and you and every day you're selling. You, you accumulate wealth that way. But we have a, a get rich quick mindset, you know? And I, I'm so sad that that is part of the this this, this, this generation, the, the young generation now attitude to life, you know, get it now, get it quick, get it quick. And it, it, it will not happen. I've never seen any man I don't care who they were. Get anything quickly and it lasts. Most of them I know are in poverty at their later stage in life. They end up in poverty later at their later stage in life and end up almost like a bomb on the street, you know, because the Bible warns us about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Man have to under, we have to understand that you could move from the last failure. You could, you know, you could move. You don't have yeah. to be stuck. That's true. Because failure is not the end. Failure is not the end. Yeah. And then one of the things that we must emphasize is that crisis, crisis is just an announcement that you're going to the next level. Because you mm -hmm. may not, you may not have all the things you need to have. You may not be all the things you need to be. You may not even go to all the places you want to go to or do all the things you need to do. But the power of the things that would try to hinder you, you have to see them broken. You have to declare that they are broken. Many times men are silent and they don't make declarations. Mm -hmm. And many times they think that it's hard to make a declaration in the midst of a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times, mm -hmm. you see? The reason that the psalmist is saying that is because he lost his way. He lost his compass and stumbled into the village of the giant he killed. Mm -hmm. And the people recognized him. Although he had a beard, they said, that's the, that's the killer. They had no internet. <laughs> they had no, no newspaper, but they said, that's the man. That, the man that they described, mm -hmm. although it was a couple of years past, they said, that's mm -hmm. the boy. Yeah. <laughs> you see? So in crisis... Mm -hmm. he, he was in the middle of a crisis, and he, he had to he had to get out of that. Mm. He did what he had to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he had to feign mad. He had to feign as a mad a madman. Let, 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 me, let me ask you. Let me ask you this for the, the benefit of all. Uh, uh, you know, um, <laughs> given the role of men, head of the house, priest of the home, family. Mm -hmm. Do you think, and maybe maybe men need to hear this, right? That there's a special anointing on men. Mm. And God speak to us and answers us mm. when we are very serious about our intentions. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
My question is, and for the comfort of men, especially non-believers, once you are in Christ as a man, there is something special as a man mm. that God um, ordains on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cody. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, but I think that's um, so important what you're saying, Roger, because um, one, I think <laughs> a lot of men don't know because they haven't been taught. Mm. And if and even if you have been taught, I, I I don't want to sit here and say that is a valid excuse because you can teach yourself. Mm. You know when you when you when you talked about you know pushing past the challenges and breaking the bars and coming out of your comfort zone, some men just too lazy. They don't want to take the time to do what is necessary. To get the information that they need in order to move to an, another level you understand we don't even want to take the time to spend with god to pray and ask god what is your will pertaining to our lives so you would always find two types of men everywhere you go you would find the types the type that is progressing the one that seems to be cool calm and collected and have an answer but particularly some words of wisdom for you know, almost anything that you bring up, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you would find those that just sit there, mm -hmm. and they is like they don't have nothing to say. You know, it's like they never have anything to say. It's like, you know, uh, we just there. Like a woman is asking the question, then that why men not take partaking in in programs like these? Like, if you look in the chat, you would see Miss Florida is a woman, Susan is a woman. Tessa is a woman. You understand? Federica is also a woman. Christ Child is the only man there making a comment. I, I want to, I want to, I want to, I hope, I want to believe that they, they're using the, the female devices to listen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think, um, I think, Roger, you're correct, brother. When you yeah, when you hear a man a man come into Christ, it's a it's a whole new ball game. Man. It's, I don't want to well not I don't want to call it a ball game, but it's a whole different different way of living and life. Mm -hmm. And that is where what men really desire resides in them. Okay. In wow. that in that in that in that power of Christ in you. But I think men has been beat down so much yeah, boy. To, 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 to think that you know, mediocrity is okay. Hmm. You know, because I don't... And, 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 and men don't want to as, aspire to anything great because they've been branded as troublemakers. Yeah. Branded as rebellious. You understand? So a lot of men would go to church but they don't aspire to, 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 for any any gift of the spirit, any ministry, uh, an appointment or anointing, because they've been they've been made to feel that you know it's not possible. Yeah, yeah. So the question you ask about about you know us men, us men, you know, not not wanting to 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 go further in God. To go deeper in God is, is, is relevant because when you look across the landscape, it appears that many men are very com are very, I, I would I, I would not even say they are comfortable, I would not even say they're happy, but they, they would sit and 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 and, and appear hmm. to be to be to be to be just going through the motion. Right. You know, just going through the motion. So yeah. it's something we have we we for God, God will have to. What I would say, God will have to, 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 to raise up some success cases to be of example for us. You understand? Because right now, it's it's a it's a hard sell. <laughs> it's a hard sell to the unsaved man that he, the Christian man, is, is is the Christian life is the 
because of what they see sometimes as, as a representation. True. You know? I know I know what's interesting about that is I mean, a lot of men spend a lot of time on on social media, right? right. And you see <laughs> it's not a real place. And the, the, the people that project themselves on it, um, given a perception that, you know, this is the best life and so on. Mm -hmm. In reality, it's quite opposite. Mm -hmm. True. Um, more than 99%, the authentic ones on social media oftentimes do not post anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> probably just, they're probably just they're looking, right? Right. Um, but it's a lot of it's a lot of cases where yeah men as well as women um, live on it to get um, validation um, accept, uh, acceptance and so on and the narratives that's on it they can easily and they have been um, easily um, misled by it right so we forget that. The true narrative is in the Holy Scriptures in terms of how we should live our life. Mm -hmm. And then we have all Tom, Jill, and Harry using all these um, words to just drive the emotions and feel good kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And, and we jump on it, you know, and, um, and we become somebody, we become the non-real person that is on Facebook. And even right. the person who's posting it oftentimes doesn't even believe that. Yep. Or know for themselves that there's something else. Mm -hmm. And I will become, we become uh, this other person in this cyber reality world. Mm -hmm. And we lose essence mm -hmm. of, of Christ altogether. Mm -hmm. Right? And, um, and that's a dangerous thing and you know it's 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 about a lot a lot of times some men uh, uh, speaking to those now that um that that you know is, is that follow the social media all the time it's right. it's uh um always looking to see what is the next um when is the next event or was a new fad or and then you you <laughs> <laughs> you, get exposed to, you get exposed to narratives and, and things that you're looking at and so on, uh, musics and what's in it, uh, and you're really are blinded as to how that is really distracting and pulling you. The devil, it, you know, it, it's like I was talking to a gentleman the other day and he said, look, um, he wants to homeschool his, um, his child, right? Because it's a thing. Uh, it's the safest thing to do following um, the biblical times when you know that, that you know you had this kind of homeschooling thing. Um, and I said to him, you know, if you think that keeping them home, <laughs> hiding, hiding them from the devil, <laughs> <laughs> the devil it has a stronger presence in the virtual world than than he is in the physical yeah. realm, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right? So there's no escaping, really. You can't run from it. Mm. Right? But you see, if we don't stay grounded as men, mm. and what, and, and Christ's teachings is not something abstract enough for, for uh, and, and speaking to the unbelievers now, it's not something abstract. Mm. Constitutions, mm. whether it be American Constitution, the United Kingdom, Major cities, countries of this world have been adopted from the teachings of the Bible. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right? Movies today too. And of course, <laughs> you know, we warm it and alter it and amend it to suit all kind so of right. idealistic positions and so on. Yeah. But where did it where did it came from? Right? There is there is a there's a connection. There has to be a connection to something, and that that's the that's the word of God, right? It is very clear. So why do you want a watered down version mm -hmm. of Christ's teaching yeah. when 
as men, you get it, right? And I'll tell you this, for those who know Roger Duncan very well, you would know that um, this didn't just happen overnight. I didn't right. just start all of a sudden talking like this, right? right. I've, I've been through some really hard times and experiences that, that has made me understood now how critical this is. Mm-hmm. And I really pray and hope that, you know, that a lot of men and young men don't waste time mm-hmm. like I have. Mm-hmm. Don't have to go through yeah. you know, experiences and, and, and so on to learn. If, some, if somebody been through the bad experience already, yeah. <laughs> God, God died for we sin already. You get nailed on the cross. So, well, let's not do that too. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, unfortunately, <clears throat> you know, the devil is um ever present, you know, it's and 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 we fall short, but then it's not the thing that when we fall short that we cannot move on. Yeah, right. <laughs> You, you learn from it and you keep your lessons as a reality check all the time that's right. so that you don't repeat the mistakes of the past and that's why you grow as a man that's how you grow all right let's take a, a comment here real quick um from my brother here he's saying he's saying so he, he clarified he's also a, a man so he's <laughs> he saying i'm a man all right so he said for me i see that church is a place that emasculate men and stifle them under overbearing pastor overbearing pastor who don't value them for their true masculinity but are constantly seen as a threat so silence Chiver, we talked about that before <laughs> we talked about we talked about that in the past um you know as one of the threat why why you know when the big dog is in the place so to speak all puppy had to put a tail between their butt and go and hide in a corner. When when there's a misunderstanding as to what really should be happening in terms of um, transference of wisdom and, and, and knowledge and helping the brother to move from one place to another, you find men sometimes in authoritative position, they tend to, you know, one person said, the one with the power is the one who has the knowledge. Yeah. So what you what you find happening sometimes is that the one with the power want to keep the power. So you f- he's afraid to empower because he he feels if he empower, then that gonna bring everybody in a level playing field. Therefore, he would not be able to. <laughs> you see, as as Sabi, you know what you know what causes that? What? A lot of us think that we manage people. Hey, well, you, you, you don't manage people. You manage. <laughs> things yeah and you lead people mm. and once you understand that then you already understand that the process around leading people is what you manage mm. the process on leading people itself is where you get the best out of them yeah that's right and it requires you to allow them to walk in front it's like when you're walking with your children now to a crowd where do you go in front and leave them behind yeah okay. <laughs> so you put the child in front mm. and if you if you make a sways you don't you, you touch the shoulder right like as if you're okay you know pull it to the left a bit or pull it to the right that is what is it and the child learn over time mm-hmm. by walking and crowd several times with daddy right that i need to stay close all the time mm. i need to stay on the sidewalk all the time and so on and that's how we grow that's right. I, I i understand the comment the persons make mm-hmm. right and i'll also say this that we are priests all of us are priests in our own home oh, that's right, right. yeah right mm-hmm. and if you understand that as a mature person mm-hmm. and you feel stifled in your assembly mm-hmm. i would expect that priest in you to lead and have the conversation right don't, don't sit back and be stifled have the conversation with the pastor mm-hmm. because the pastor may never have the conversation with you mm-hmm. and sometimes he doesn't see it enough 
Yeah. That's the hardest part. Tell somebody, I don't know. We know we have we are not critical of ourselves because we don't see ourselves. Yeah. A lot of us, if we are able to come out of our body for yeah. one day and watch ourselves in action for the day, <laughs> we, we ain't going back inside that body. <laughs> 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 Lord, that's what's happening as well. Despicable. <laughs> but you see, that's that's what that's what Bishop was saying earlier on too. Yeah, yeah. In terms of uh, me and Raja, we had a, a conversation in person, and it's the same thing we we're saying. Mm-hmm. Take a look at time, and maybe actually do that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, don't try that. That's <laughs> astral traveling. But maybe just kind of think outside of the box about yourself for yeah. a minute. You know, yeah. what I mean? in the business world, they say do a SWOT analysis, do something mm-hmm. of that sort, and and check yourself. Find something that, or maybe ask somebody who you believe would give you honest, you know, truthful. Like, you know, some Zabi. some friends or, or some people afraid to do that too, yeah, because you know they, they share what they are they are yeah, afraid yeah. of what they really will see yeah, about true. themselves. But that's the yeah. best place to begin if you really want to change. Yeah, change, yeah, yeah. you know, it's not about yeah. being happy. Please, no, no, is about no, no. trying to please God. Yeah. But in reality, in this space, right. we we coexist with each other, and there are things. Trust me, the thing, the good thing about you, sometimes <laughs> you don't know it, and yeah. just so it is for the bad things or yeah. the things that you could fix, yeah. you yourself don't even see it. And you the know? person who is gung ho and hard fast and mm. quote unquote seem to be the one who stifles situation, right? You know, there's a placement for them in, in the work, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, because when you set the plan and we say this is where we're going, and you put that person in charge, yeah, who is help is is, is heaven bound, right? <laughs> Steadfast, yeah, and decide they're stifling and inside the job with it. Mm-hmm. That's the best person to carry out the work. Yeah. They do that. They do that. They did that to me when I was in school. When I was a troublesome boy, they give me a prefect role. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that changed everything <laughs> because now <laughs> I know I didn't do it. You understand? It's only years after I understood why that why, what that wise teacher did, and I yeah. just to calm down myself. What they did, they give me another role, vice captain, and then they made me captain. Mm. Bro, the thing changed my life. Yeah. You understand? But all, all the time I was giving these person who had these hearts trouble. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You can't do nothing. Yeah. You're my peer. But yeah. no, yeah. I'm in that position. I want respect from the others. Yeah. It made me feel, see how it felt to um to be in the in the other person's shoes. You know? Yeah. But yeah. I don't 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 sit down in an assembly there where we are supposed to be fellowshipping. Yeah. I keep it much short. One Christ on the one body and keep your mouth shut yeah have have the discussion meet who you have to meet in person right. that's how that's how you people people despite how you know how godly some of us may may be we go through a lot of challenges too you know? mm-hmm. and you know certain behaviors come out sometimes you don't know what we're dealing with until we start to talk that's yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yeah you're right yeah that's true you know um by you know last year i was i was going through a, a, a season and you know the lord said to me man the, the closer you get to me the move the move the move the move filthy and unclean things you go see about yourself <laughs> you know the more you get close to jesus you realize how much more you need him that's right you know yeah. how much more you, you need to be like him so no but you have to start somewhere you got to yeah, you yeah. have to start some way. So, yeah. bro, nothing wrong with it. You know, you 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 having as 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 long as the conversation and say, hey, this is how I feel about this. You know, um, could you explain? Mm-hmm. Because he's correct, man. When you are a leader, you know, you you go through some seasons and some and some and some. You know, and we have this impression of 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 what perfection is. Which is which is which is skewed, you know. That we have that perfection. That, that means that you must have no flaws. You must you must you must you must have no. You, you, you know, it, it, everything about you must be one hundred percent. That is not true. 
Yeah. That it's impossible for the for that to be in this life. Uh, yeah. show, me a, show me a perfect man and would tell his name is God. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. behind the guy, any God's walking on the earth. But um, one of the nice things about challenges uh, I've come to realize is that it is necessary sometimes to build us and take us to a different level. You know, sometimes, unless you have any force, when we started talking about this conversation about challenges, Trevor talked about force. You remember you talked about that? And, you know, force can do certain things to people. It can push you. You understand? But a lot of men don't want challenges. So instead of the force push them upward, they only take the one that push them downward. So they keep making poor decisions, poor choices. Mm. You know, it's like you don't, you can't learn. It's like, oh, people say you're breaking stick in your ears. I don't know what that yeah. means that way, but I don't know. My dad explained explain down to me one day, you're breaking stick in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> that is what some men are doing. You know, if you measure your, your life as a man, a decade shouldn't pass. And we ain't talking about just achieving land and getting house we're talking about internal growth mm -hmm. you understand being able to reason differently yeah you should not be 30 years and still reasoning as a 20 year old you understand and if we had got if we got the opportunity to go into midlife midlife crisis we'll probably talk more about that so i don't think we have that time now but that was the next thing on the agenda because you have some <laughs> big grown men, 50 years now, starting to act like if they're only 20. Yeah. You understand? They're dressing like 20. They're liming with 20 year olds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you check where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And it's like their reasoning is still so poor. It's like, man, move from that place. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> I think when you're not in healthy spaces and you don't have good friendship, mm -hmm with the right to the people, it can really draw you down. Yeah, the way you speak, you know, it's like, you know, you're like, what well, the only Bible talk about it, um, evil communication corrupts good character. Man, at, you have, at some point, you need to move from some space. I learned that as a young boy a long time ago, and I'm still learning it today. Yeah. You know, the people I associate with is so, my circle is so small. You understand? I, God had to pull me out altogether. A lot of things in my life was God pulling me out, pulling me out, out of a, a community, out of a place in order for him to use me. Because if I stayed in the same place sometimes, uh, you know, as Bishop was talking about, the man sitting at the gate, he'd been there for a long time. If you keep staying at the gate, yes, yes, you, you, know, you sit down there still. And sometimes somebody, many men may pass and give you a hand in and you ain't taking it. You tell yourself, well, I, can't, I can't stand up. Maybe, you know, I've been sitting here so long, if I try to stand up, I feel I will fall. No man, take a leap of faith. And faith is a very, very um, important thing. And not faith to get a house and so forth. Because you see, the problem again is a lot of men, they acquire a lot of things. But you're gaining the world and you're losing your soul. The focus tends to be so much on gaining the world. How I look. How I look. How people see me. Not so much how God sees you. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when men lose everything that they gain by one coincidence or maybe a natural disaster or things probably gone bad, they didn't have faith to keep them. So instantly what you find happening is that they go crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. They gone loco because it's like I lost my life. What is your life in reality? It doesn't consist of the things that you <laughs> Yeah, possess. but that's something you possess. <laughs> but that's yeah. a hard truth for men. Yeah. And the community has taught us that no nah, man like craziness, you know, you need to have something to show, you know, and, and this is the thing that parents sometimes teach their children. Nothing around having something to show, but teach the children, teach young men about this value. Build a value system for yourself. Things you would not do because of your value system, that is going to guide you in the right direction. So because of the absence of those things, you find men, young men, they're making all, listen, you had to be done. Need to have two yeah. children before you go and married, brother. At 25 years old, no, you can get married at that age. What 23 years old, I got married. The men thought I was crazy. <laughs> you find a good woman who have a good vision, you won't go and marry, or you must be stupid. When you let her pass for <laughs> you, understand what I'm saying you, you do the things God way. You might not know everything yet, but if you stay tuned to the voice of the Lord, mm -hmm. even when you make mistakes, he's gonna pardon them. 
He's going to cover your sins and he's going to give you the grace. He's going to rebuke you when you have to. And he's going to groom you and you're going to grow. And It's a, a process. Bishop, you see, it's such an important thing that tonight. I never thought about it that way. That a rebuke could be for <laughs> 10 years. Right. Yeah, sure. 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 I show we all can really put that in context <laughs> in our lives when we think about yeah, it yeah, yeah. as men of different age. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I have a lot to learn still. But yeah. thank God for brothers like you who take the time to have a discussion with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I appreciate the wisdom, brothers. Yeah, man. One of the, one of the takeaways, um, the, the key to some of the issues that might be plaguing our men, the, the first billionaire, the first mm -hmm. billionaire in the Bible, he pre he I think he predates predates Job mm -hmm. Abraham. Mm -hmm. He predates Abraham. So there were three billionaires. You had Solomon, you had Abraham, you had Job. Mm -hmm. Job was the first billionaire and he was afraid. Mm -hmm. So because yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes you could have the fear before you the, 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 the breakthrough comes. Mm -hmm. And you could have the fear while managing the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And you know what the key is? The, the point I want to make is that he made a statement in Job 23. He says, I esteem mm -hmm. your word more than my necessary food. You see, mm -hmm. men, men love to eat. Men love to eat a good meal. Mm -hmm. But what Job was saying is that the, the way in which he guided his life and his family he said, more than my necessary food, because these men, the children were feasting. They were always having uh, something to eat, some something around the table. He said, but the word of God, the way in which I esteem it, he said, more than my necessary meals, more than my necessary sustenance. Mm. And right there, you see, there's a key. And then is after the psalmist David come and he says, yeah, you, you know, Job was really saying something powerful. He says, God, what God does, he takes his word, mm -hmm. all the principles, and put them high above his name. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, if the personality, some people don't want the personality because the personality will judge you. The, the righteousness of God brings judgment. The holiness of God demands judgment. So the personality would always come after you. But the principles would keep you from the judgment. Mm -hmm. So what God does, if the personality fail, the word would, would never fail. That's right. And that's that's what that's one of the things our men need to, you know, be a part of being the word because where it shall a young man bends his ways. You see? So the, the principles are, are very important. The principles are there yeah. to, to help us navigate, you know. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, I think that as Bishop closing statement. Mm -hmm. Roger, give me yours. I know we have work tomorrow, so um, we yeah. over our time. But um, I'm hoping we can probably continue discussion this discussion if you guys have the time next week because I I like to finish things, and I, I feel like we haven't finished. Mm -hmm. We still have to go into the midlife the midlife crisis. You understand? And then we're gonna talk about fate too. So that's the next two things. If you have a time next week, you can continue this con this con this some conversation on, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there, there, there are no finishing with men. That, that's <laughs> <laughs> on ongoing discussion. But yeah. uh, you know, <clears throat> I just want to close by 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 saying that um, uh, men recognize that the. Is we have a we, we have some work to do. Mm -hmm. um, we are challenged because we have not yet accepted uh, the reality of our own situation. Right. And I want us really until next week when we meet again. So I'm confirming my availability, Savi. All right. That um, we spend some time trying to be very honest with ourselves. Right. Go hide in the bush, go up somewhere. If you have a hill, um, whatever. Um, you know, you want to feel like Moses, do what do what you need to do. Spend yeah. some time yeah. with yourself and accept some of the realities and shortfalls. It is okay mm. if it's if it convicts you in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay to feel bad about it, it's okay to cry. Uh, it's okay if it 
if it feels uh, or seems to be a very messy situation, I think once you're able to spot it and you have gotten that conviction that it, something is wrong or something is not right and you, are, you, you have come to that position, then you are, you are in a really good place to start to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And there are people within your own confines of your own home that might be able to help or within your community. Um, I know for us, it's a matter of trust, not wanting to seek help here and there and so on. But you could find help in ways without necessarily exposing yourself to, to persons, um, but rather um, asking them of a situation that, um, <laughs> like them young people that say these days, um, are asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> But um, of course, um, the best help, as Bishop mentioned earlier, on, we need to read. Yeah, uh, that that reading um, uh, is is only you don't get it on social media. Mm -hmm. It's 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 the holy scriptures. Yep. Um, if you don't have a physical Bible, if you go on Google Play, you will get apps and so on um, that um, have the contents of the Bible. I. I'm very cautious about that one as the yeah, one yeah. you are. Know, you, <laughs> um, you know, I know a lot of people use it these days, you know. And sometimes I wonder, Lord, I wonder if it's the right thing. Next thing you know, some kind of, you know, these scammers on them these days is what they're doing, you know. Yep. Uh, but start somewhere that is that 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 is intentional, that me as Roger, me as John. Tom, whoever it is, that I I want to do something about bettering myself and my family. I want to to live right, and there is and and there is excitement about that. Right, sure. I tell you this before I got saved. I, I, I never thought that you know living right is excited. <laughs> you know, um, this is the this is the excitement here. You know, and you know it's carnival and this lime and and so on. You know, but carnival over and i'm still helpless i'm still without purpose and time is going and i'm getting older and i'm not achieving anything and nothing is happening right and then everything is circled around that until you know god opened up a way and 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 showed me some things and you realize hey there's a lot of exciting work there's something exciting about seeing somebody else the same the same measure of care yeah right that you showed when you were on save right it's the same measure of care when you're saving you know, except for this time it is very intentional the way yeah. that christ wanted right you cared about your mother as an unsaved person doesn't mean that when you go get saved you still still have to care you care about your friends right care enough to go and boss a line with them but when you get saved, you still have to care about the feelings and the emotions and still boss align with them too. It, it, it's, it's no different. And except for this time, you are doing it the way Christ wants us to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? And you, you, you say there is a sacrifice. Well, think for this one for one moment. What is more of a sacrifice? How much is a sacrifice compared the sacrifice that you think that is difficult to make. Think about the sacrifice that God has made, that Christ has made. God had given his only son to us. Mm -hmm. And the price that he has had to pay. And what we think, that is, what, what is our sacrifice compared to that? That's right. Hmm. And at the end of the day, right, where we all want to go to heaven, there's a song, you know, Bishop, we just sing at funerals, and anytime me and my wife go to funerals, I will hear it, we just laugh. <laughs> uh, because I know it is a figurative thing, but it's literally it's just song funny, you know, because it goes like, when we all get to heaven. <laughs> and people sing that, you know, with such conviction, you know, when yeah. we all get to death. Yeah. 
the, the, the truth of the matter is everybody has to go huh? <laughs> yeah, some can stay, but you have to appear before the judgment. Everybody has to go. Right. <laughs> no heaven before yeah. judgment. <laughs> yeah, everybody goes, but you, some can stay. Yeah. So, I mean, hmm. at what point in time, right, do we say game is over? We sure. want to enjoy. Some of us are pla planetos, and I hear what it is. And before I close, we say, you know, I could enjoy all myself now. And then when I get older, when I, get older yeah, I, child, I go give my life to Christ. Well, you know, the thing about that, I ain't to show much guarantee you have of that. True. Right? And then if when you get older, well, you you, you have the master plan then. <laughs> Two young guys just died on a motorcycle accident mm. over the Easter weekend. Mm. Young mm. guys. Yeah. yeah. And there are more young people dying these days than old people. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. And then sometimes we never die. Something happens, we lose our mind, and we don't know ourselves, but we live in with, mm -hmm. without any, you know, you yeah. don't know yourself. Um, yeah. So we don't have a master plan for our lives. So why leave that by chance? True. And there, this care that we care and, and the love that we, we say we love each other. Let's do it, you know, um, the right way. That's right. Right, Trevor. So, yeah. yeah, you know, um, as as Roger was speaking, it, it really came home to me that um, every one of us who are alive today, we are living in, in some of the the, 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 the the times that the word of God says, you know, will come to pass and it's a it's a glorious opportunity for us to really um maximize the full potential of, of of what of what christ you know really came to demonstrate you know i was i was <clears throat> speaking you know to some people last week and you know saying to them that um every one of us in the community where we live, whatever denomination you fellowship in, together we have a we, we have a, such a powerful witness for Christ. If we only see ourselves, our as uh, you know, our small community, our small congregation as the only witness, we are making a serious mistake. All of us together, all the Christians in the community together is the power of christ you know and that is the power i think of, of us, us men we and i think that is the that is the challenge we face that the enemy constantly opposes us from from coming together because if we if men get together uh we change we'll change our nation true literally we will change this nation so um but we have a good opportunity. We have a golden opportunity that we have to we have to seize and make use of. Um, growing knowledge, growing wisdom, grow in in content. Understand order and time management, and and apply yourself. Apply us. Let's if we, let us apply ourselves. Let's 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 um let's be be be, be let partners in this, and it will spill over in so many other areas of our lives. You know. Um, all other areas of our life. We're going to see the benefit, not just for this generation, but for the generation to come. So really, I think we, 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 we are, we are, we are, we are, I think the seed is already sown. We are past that stage. We're just watering and, and caring and, but we're going to see the fruits of it. So let's keep at it. Um, I, I, I just sense that um, we're beginning to see a, a change in the dynamics and um, men are going to come to that place where they realize, hey, We've been marginalized for too long. We've been, we, you know, the emphasis was on on, on the woman and, and the woman, etc. But um, this is our time to to reestablish what God has declared. We are the head, you know. Yep. Amen. And he, and, and he he expects us to fulfill that head mandate. Blessings tonight. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, as we wrap up. Just want to let men know that there is hope and there's hope for us men. All is not lost. 
You understand? Mm -hmm. And there is a cause, now is the time. Yeah. I love the the, 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 the closing statement of Uncle Raja. Go and do some introspection on your life. Mm -hmm. You understand? And do it ever so often. It's also is always important and the Bible is a good tool. Uh, the best thing you could use to measure up your your situation. You know, if you find you're struggling in a particular area, learn to be real with yourself. And if you have a wife, that's your partner, not your enemy. Don't allow the enemy to tie up your head. Your wife is your partner. Go tell True. your wife your weakness. Some men are afraid. Nobody <laughs> go and do that. Right? But you know what? As hard as it may be, when you come clean, when you open up, when you can speak and the air can be so light, it's much better than trying to have, you know, things in your heart that you're hiding. God knows you're going to bed in the night. It's just pressure, brother. You lie down on your bed and now they're checking on. Wow, boy, hiding this thing that I'm doing from my wife. But go and sleep in peace, brother. Go and sleep in peace. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's so... Precious mm. to lay down here at night, sleep, wake up in the night, and your mind ain't going on anything. And trust me, if you know anything about the mind, even if you get a little zoo, a little z, when you wake up in the night, your mind goes right back to your situation. So if you really want to know what your issue is, you even need to go to the mountain as Roger say, you know, take a sleep and wake up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you tell me better. A lot of men. They just sweep that thing aside and say, I don't want to think about you. Leave me alone. They have conversation with themselves in the wee hours of the morning when their wives are asleep. And even young men too, the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. You know, even if you don't have a wife, you still have a life. And one day the choices you make, you know, whether either you'll either be condemned by it, you might get a good judgment. And even your own choices go judge you too. <laughs> boy listen god give us a conscience and there's something that happened inside it but a lot of people just nominate 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 anyway the rebuke of the lord is not for one day six seven ten years and guess what the spirit of the lord as long as you're alive he ain't going no way he always be there because he loves you so much to nudge you you know i don't want you to go to hell i don't want you to die and go to hell i want you to come to me so I keep giving you this little nudge as here. Hey, brother, brother, you, you know you do something wrong there. You need to get it right. You need to get it right. That is a serious practicality in my younger years before I actually start going to church and give my heart to the Lord. When I come out and phone a kid, something would say to me, you know what you do there was wrong. And tomorrow, the devil used use the voices of the boys on the block and say, you are the killer man here. You are a man. And they reinforce the negativity and the sin that I say to myself, yeah, boy, I ain't business. And I go back another time and the Spirit of the Lord will come back again. You know what you do is wrong. No set a long talk. Again, do we ignore that little voice inside? That is the Spirit of the Lord in your DNA speaking to you, brothers. I ain't talking to no woman tonight. We're talking to men. Because when you get it right, your generation, brother, you carrying the seed. And that's a powerful thing. All right? So... Bishop, anything on your heart you want to just drop before I close off or we good right there? No, yeah, we, 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 what, we, what we really want to uh, say to all the men out there is that what we unpack tonight is intergenerational curses. Mm -hmm. What we are dealing with is spirits of inheritance, whether it be with money, whether it be with the children, dealing with your wife, dealing with yourself, right. dealing with uh, things that you, you don't even want to, to speak of things that you're grappling with, as Savi says, we, we dealt with, um, and not just dealt with, but our prayer is that these spirits of inheritance be broken, these generational curses be broken, uh, family and community peculiarities. Uh, you have uh, things that, uh, idiocratic issues, mm. ethnic traits must be broken, social tendencies, clannish oddities, pathological conditions of the mind and body individualities, fundamental values, uh, even cultures, passions, motives, uh, intent, agendas, especially habits, ideologies. These must be broken through prayer and they will be broken. The moment they are identified, they become 
uh, null and void. Mm-hmm. Moment you identify them, they become null and void. It's not by might. Zachariah says it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord working in us to make us better for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, until we all come to the unity of the faith. Amen. Amen. Well, brothers, let me say thank you very much again for yeah. taking the time to join us tonight on this timely discussion. As I said, um, it's my hope that when we have more voices speaking, there is power. And what we're talking about, we are demonstrating it right now. So we know what God has in store. I know he never starts something without a great plan in the end. But I do believe that there is a powerful time and there will be a powerful outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord, you know, in the near future. And it's already happening, right? But God is going to assemble us together as men in this country. Yeah, those who are called by his name and he's going to do something extremely marvelous it will blow the minds of many persons they're going to be a, going to be a great revival you understand mm-hmm. and that's what i'm trusting god for in my heart yeah i know roger feels the same way Trevor feels the mm-hmm. same way. and guess what bishop is coming over to grenada when that time comes so mm-hmm. we know the timing will be right we need the foundation. That's what God is doing thus far. We know. All right. So, wanna say bless good night to my boys, everybody. Bless All good right. night, everyone. Yeah. We thank, we thank God so much for the women who stayed on. And <laughs> <laughs> thank, God, thank God for my wife. I think she's still up. Yeah. 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 My, my wife. My wife is is right next to me here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jema, these men are these men are trying to tell us something. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We, 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 we knew we knew to the protocol. So forgive me. <laughs> all right, man. All right, man. Listen. Yeah. Well, good night again, man. And we'll connect again next week, God's willing. Bishop, I I trust you'll have the time. Yeah, thank you for having me, and it was nice to, to meet with Brother Duncan. And we'll make the time. We I think we have to make the time. It's critical that yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, we make yeah. the time. So yeah. we'll continue next week, God's willing, with um, you know, overcoming challenges. But this time we want to overcome challenges by looking at what faith is and how faith can help a man to overcome his challenges. And um, also we want to look at midnight midlife crisis because i think it's an important thing for us to look at yeah all right it's not not necessarily a biblical thing so to speak but it's a human thing right in the construct of how god has created us there are things that we experience as as man but yeah. again yeah. god is not no there's nothing new under the sun to the almighty so next week god's willing they say in my thought i hear man i say boy women just go through menopause I used to say men going through manopause. <laughs> no, men, men just go through men does pause. Man, man pause. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll continue with that discussion next week. Oh God, your life is bad. Yeah, yeah. All right, so good night, everyone. Men. Right, Take care. Right. Blessings, shalom. Trevor, good to yeah. see you again, man. All right. <laughs> All right, so guys, I um, want to say thank you for, you know, just joining us tonight in this timely discussion. If you haven't um, shared it as yet, please do take an opportunity and share this with someone. You know, there's a man out there that needs to know, yeah, that he has purpose and there is hope for him. All right, it doesn't matter what you have been through. God can use it for his glory. So take that. Put it in your pipe and smoke it as all people will see. Have a good night. It's any note. Why were we in a camp? Life is a journey. I want you to know something right now. I have to say, as I rise up in the morning, I have to give praise to the Musa. Yesterday, you know, I had a bad evening. I tell myself today it's gotta be fine. Mm-hmm. No for them now I see you make it. But tell them say that's fine. Oh God. Some say what has to be must be. 
What is yours could I never be mine? Just right now, see that people like to shine. Just make it continue to shine. Want them to know. 